Hi everyone, I'm just doing this video as a quick update to one that I did last year which was for the Wavelink mesh points. Um, if you watched that review you know that initially I was quite excited to get it because it looked a good price and a good uh, system for the money. Uh, but I had nothing but problems with it and I did say I would update once I sorted out a new system. Uh, well I did actually go for a Ubiquiti HD system but rather than buying the pre-built configured kits where everything's all pre-linked I bought the HD router on its own let just get that into there you go the Amplify HD router on its own this was £115 um, which wasn't a bad price this has got four Ethernets on the back so that set up as my main router um, plugged into the Virgin router which is now configured as a um, modem should I say and I then purchased the Amplify instant router um, so yes you're probably saying why have you bought two routers the point is that if you buy them separately you can set them up as mesh points on either or other you can intermingle them whereas on the kits you can't so this one although it's a router it's set up as a mesh point and that also gives you a couple of Ethernet ports on the back as well so I'm splitting this video into two. One will basically deal with the initial setup with the Amplify HD as the main router. And then the second video will be part two, which will just be configuring this as a mesh point and how it's been performing over the last couple of months. Hope that makes sense. On with the video. So what I've actually done is I've purchased two versions. You've got the main router here, which is from the higher end system, which is the Amplify HD. The main reason I went for this is because it has four Ethernet ports on the back which is handy to have even though the house is hardwired uh, and all go goes through a 32 port switch it's it's still handy to have uh, some Ethernets on the back of your router. I also picked up the smaller secondary router rather than the mesh points because the mesh points usually on the HD system are just plug in uh, quite large ugly ungainly things which don't have any ethernet ports on so let's have a look and see what we get in the boxes these are I always like to start my uh, I always like to do my unboxing videos where I've never actually opened anything before so you're experiencing it for the first time just like I am I know a lot of people who do unboxing videos on YouTube just basically unbox it and have a play with it and set it up first so they know what they're doing I just feel that this way you're getting a better idea of what to expect as if you were doing it yourself so there's the actual main router a very nice looking piece of kit it's not something that you're going to shy away from having on on uh, display it's all touch screen LCD display you have a light in the bottom which you can switch on and off it's USB-C powered and as I mentioned earlier you've got four full gigabits and then that's the connector to either go to existing Wi-Fi uh, wi router from say BT or Virgin or whichever or if you're running it with a direct modem or if your existing router will let you have it running modem mode you connect with that. You've also got a USB. So as you can compared to something like the RBR BK 50s for example they have four um, Ethernets but one of them is actually shared to connect to your modem or to the router for the internet so you do actually have a full four sets on this plus your internet connection which is nice all nicely packaged inside the box we've got your quick start guide which we'll look at in a moment you've got your ethernet cable to connect to your router or your modem and then your power adapter and that's everything in there so we'll have a quick look through the little quick start guide which basically tells you about the contents you've got basic features and then how to install it which you basically you do it from the app then connect the, the router power it up and so forth so we'll come and have a look at that in a moment So setup is very simple, all you need to do is just run an Ethernet cable from the internet input on the rear of the Ubiquiti to the Ethernet on the back of your modem. If you're not using a the modem then you just plug it into one of your, your external Ethernet ports. I'm using a Virgin Superhub so the beauty of those is that you can put them into um, modem only mode so it doesn't do anything other than just become a, a modem 
everything is controlled by the ubiquity which makes life a lot easier once you've plugged it in you power up the modem power up the ubiquity wait for it to boot download the app and then follow the instructions in the app it's very simple and doesn't take long to do mine prompted me to do an update as soon as it was powering up for the first time so i just went ahead and did it so it was out of the way very simple it's a touch screen on the front just press update and it does it Once it's booted, you'll see it just comes up with a time and the date, the light at the bottom comes on solid and it's ready for you to start configuring it by the app. The app's available for Android and iOS. I'm on Android, so it's just a case go to the Google Play Store. Um, just download the U Unify Network app from Ubiquity and follow the instructions. As we're doing initial setup, you go to the set up a mesh system. You should find it straight away. Just click on it and follow the on-screen instructions. It will prompt you to create a password, give yourself uh, a name for your SSD, and so forth. Pretty standard stuff that you would do normally on any router. As with most devices these days, it prompts you to create an account for Ubiquiti as well. One thing you will need to do is once you've configured your SSID you'll have to obviously go into your device that you're using such as your phone or tablet and change the Wi-Fi so you can actually access the new SSID you've created. Once you log in on the new SSID you'll see that everything should be okay. You can go through all your different options, you can enable guest accounts if you want, you can pause the internet on devices or select devices, you can change IP addresses, you can do pretty much everything you need to do. The amount of settings you have is really comprehensive. You can even do things like change the intensity of the LED on the bottom, turn it off even, set a nighttime mode so it will dim it or turn it off totally. The same with the display on the front. Quite a lot of nice options. It's very comprehensive, the options it gives you. You can even change your DHCP range IP address if need be. Um, all my existing Ethernets are, are on static IPs. So I just changed everything over onto the router so I didn't have to go into all the other devices to change them. It's very straightforward, quite simple to do, it just takes a few seconds to configure. One feature I really like is being able to split your SSIDs. So you can take 2.4 and 5 and split them. Uh, if you've got devices or certain devices that don't want to connect when they're broadcasting both at the same time you can create a new SSID away from your one in this case I've called it crappy devices and set it to 2.4 gigahertz uh, because I have a couple of devices that just won't connect to more modern networks one of those being a Nito vacuum cleaner which didn't want to connect at all to the last mesh system I tried whereas on this one I created the separate SSID and it immediately connected and it's been working solid ever since so that's a really nice handy feature to have and it's a good way to also keep certain devices onto certain networks. They'll still communicate to the entire Wi-Fi network, just obviously on a different band. The main unit itself looks really nice, and it's a touch screen. You simply swipe it to go between the different screens. It shows your statuses, such as the IP address, uh, your downloads, a speed at the time if you're connecting, what ports you've got connected, the time, and if you press and hold it, it will actually enable WPS, which again is a, a nice little feature. No messing around, touching other buttons, it's just all on the front, all on a little touch screen. Very nice looking machine. So that's the end of this part of the video. If you want to check out part two, you should see it come up on screen. Uh, part two is where I configure the instant as a mesh point and finish configuring the system.